Hi, my name is Sabrina Tinsay, and you're watching the July 18th edition of Meeting with the Faculty, where we assist students in their choice of classes by introducing faculty, teaching styles, and personalities. Our guest is today in Cypress College Chemistry Professor Dr. Craig Tamuka. Dr. Tamuka has taught at Cypress College for four years. Three of those as a full-time professor, he received his bachelor's as a Phi Beta Kappa, summa cum laude in chemistry from the University of California, Irvine, and his master's and PhD in organic chemistry from the California Institute of Technology, including two years at the Swiss Federal Institution, Institute of Technology Zurich in Zurich, Switzerland. Dr. Tamuka, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. When did your passion for chemistry begin? I think it began not necessarily in high school, but in in college and actually I was like a lot of other students when I was going into college I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do and I tried taking some classes and I thought well I like chemistry and uh, I'm pretty good at it and there's some jobs out there so I just investigated chemistry and, and the more I more classes I took the more I enjoyed it. When and why did you decide to major in chemistry and specialize in organic chemistry? Well, kind of ironically, I took I like <laughs> organic chemistry because you didn't have to deal with numbers too much. I think all too often in science, you get bogged down in equations and numbers and trying to memorize those things. And so when it came to organic chemistry, it was more problem solving and how you approach prob problems and the logic behind the problems, which really fascinated me. So it was more of a problem solving approach rather than uh, plugging in numbers and trying to do more technical aspects. I see. Why did you just decide to attend UCI for your bachelor's? Is this a university would you recommend students to go to? Um, I actually decided to go to University of California, Irvine because uh, I grew up here in Cyprus and uh, I had a, my wife, then girlfriend, that lived in Cyprus as well. We went to high school together and so I definitely wanted to stay in the area and University of California, Irvine is a fine university and, and um, yes, I would recommend it to others. It's a good school. Um, what did you hate most about the college when you were a, when you were a student? Because I know everyone has their own pet peeves and, you know, what uh -huh. was yours? Uh, one of the things I, I didn't like the most um, was that you had to pay a lot of money for oh, books. I agree with that one. <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> almost every student agrees that yeah. books are seemingly out of control in oh, terms yes. of how much they cost. And so what I've done, actually done, I've spearheaded this movement in the past year or so, to save students money by going towards custom lab manuals and custom uh, materials. And towards that end, uh, this coming semester, I was just looking at some um, ballpark numbers and it looks like we're gonna save chemistry students approximately twelve to $15,000 wow, per semester from now on. And that number is going to gradually go up from there, not go down. That's so that's, amazing. And that's just by looking at customized lab manuals and uh, other areas where we can save students money and I think that was real, really important and that's uh, something that I've really thought, uh, thought a lot about and tried to devise different strategies to be able to save students money. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Do you have any funny stories you might want to share with your students? I don't past years in college? <laughs> I don't have too many funny <laughs> stories, unfortunately. Um, I, I've met a lot of funny people and I've met a lot of different characters. And actually, I guess one, there was one where I was taking a physical chemistry class and I just thought to myself, well, I wasn't getting a material, it was over my head, mm -hmm. so I just took a quick break. And, and then I actually uh, woke up in class and the <laughs> professor was, was yelling at me. Oh boy. Uh, and I, and I <laughs> later found out that he threw some chalk at me. Fortunately, he missed, but uh, he, was, he was a tough professor, and that was probably the toughest class I ever had. So uh, I think it wasn't funny from my perspective, but it was funny from the class's perspective, I guess. That's making me laugh quite funny. <laughs> you teach a number of courses in chemistry. Do you follow any certain format in teaching those courses? I, for, I follow a pretty <laughs> loose format, and now we have to as an instructor, we need to make a syllabus and we need to pretty mm -hmm. much stick with that syllabus. But um, it's pretty flexible, it's pretty open-ended, but at the same time it sets the rules. And so um, I'm not particularly stuck on any particular format, but it does depend on the class to some extent. Some mm -hmm. classes have more hours of lecture and fewer hours of lab, and some have more hours of lab and fewer hours of lecture. 
and we have to make the appropriate uh, changes for each course. Correct. May you describe your teaching style to us in a couple words? In a couple <laughs> words. Um, fun and informative, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I try it, so that's the couple words. Now here's mm -hmm. the long answer. I try to make things as real as possible. Mm -hmm. And I try to make, to show how things affect everyday lives of people. Mm -hmm. And how you can use your knowledge, your own everyday knowledge, to actually, uh, and you can influence, you can, fr you can use that to help you learn the concepts of chemistry a lot better, I think. Awesome. Well, what do you look for in students' essays when you do have tests, discussion, group activities? What, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the right answer. <laughs> That's probably not the answer you wanted, though. Um, what I look for is a nice, uh, I try to make my questions as objective as possible. And so we look for objective answers. And that's one thing we definitely teach in science. Not to necessarily get your own bias or your own opinion Correct. in a way. And to, to look at things from a, from a third party or, th or outside point of view and to make sure what we'd say is at least objective and impartial. Do you expect any students to be punctual for classes, or are you punctual yourself? I try my best to be punctual, but I, I realize that sometimes students are late for whatever reason, and I realize, and they realize that I'm late once in a while for some <laughs> reason, uh, and we respect that. It's not such a big deal. I don't make a big deal of it when students walk in late, and if I'm a, you know, a few seconds late, or if I uh, extend a break a little bit longer uh, for whatever reason, then the students don't make a big deal of it. So it's no big deal either way. And this is college, and if this was you know, a different level of education and maybe we'd make a big deal out of it but this is college and it and it's, things happen correct what is your favorite course to teach and why i like chem 101 mm -hmm. it's a course intro course for uh, the health science majors and i really like it because we have a lot of great students a lot of open-minded students and but on the other hand the students don't come in with the greatest of math abilities mm -hmm. and so we have to help them they fight a kind of a two-front war where they have to s do the math part and the chemistry part and that's tough but these students are really up to the task they I really see. do a good job and and they 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 tackle these things they, they take on these problems they seek help from tutors which we have help for on on campus and, and as a result they do a good job and it makes it fun to teach what can students gain from enrolling in one of your chemistry courses uh, knowledge a lot <laughs> um, of it obviously hopefully, hopefully <laughs> a bit about science um, and a lot of students come like I mentioned before like they come with an open mind and that, uh, that's just fantastic and and they learn about how chemistry actually uh, takes over not necessarily takes over but has a huge part of their, occupies a huge part of their lives and how we depend on things, uh, chemicals, and how our, how our body needs chemicals and how it relates to our everyday lives, how it relates to vitamins, how it relates to trans fats, why trans fats are called trans and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, saturated fats, unsaturated fats, so hot topics of the day, you know, trans fats, a huge growing topic, That's especially right. with uh, fast food chains dieting and, and dieting everything. exactly and so we learned exactly what it, a trans fat is why it's called a trans fat and how it affects us all right today we are introducing a new segment in meeting with a faculty called students take the mic three students in cypress college have asked questions if given a chance to ask anything what would you ask a chemistry professor and this is what they had to say how is it that um that the energy ray that uh, reflects off of a atom gives it its color. Uh, what actually happens? <laughs> it's quite interesting. A little question. more technical <laughs> an uh, answer is what actually happens is when an atom absorbs energy, the electrons go to these higher energy orbitals, and when it comes back down, it releases that energy, and it can release the energy in a number of different forms. And one of the forms it can release that energy is in is light. And so the amount of en the light given off, the color, uh, oftentimes or, uh, def reflects the amount of energy given off. So certain amounts of energy give off certain types of light, uh, certain colors of light. So blue has a certain uh, an amount of energy given off, red has a certain am amount of energy, and uh, other colors as well. I see. And here's our second question. 